In this lab, you will experimentally determine the molar gas constant by forming and trapping hydrogen gas that is evolved by dissolving magnesium with hydrochloric acid. In order to do this, you will be given a burette tube which is sealed at one end, a rubber stopper with a hole through it, and some copper wire and magnesium ribbon. You will need to cut a length of magnesium ribbon about 9 to 10 centimeters long. Wrap it into a loose coil, and then wrap that coil within the copper wire. Make a loose cage to hold the magnesium ribbon in place. Shown here are two examples of what not to do with the magnesium ribbon and the copper cage. Winding the magnesium ribbon too tightly, or making too large a cage with the copper wire, will lead to inexact results from your experiment. Once you've prepared the magnesium ribbon in the copper wire cage, you'll need to collect some hydrochloric acid and fill a portion of that into your burette. You'll only require about 10 to 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, so use a beaker to pour it into the burette. With the hydrochloric acid in the burette, you will need to fill the remaining volume of the burette tube with distilled water. Do this very slowly. You do not want to disrupt and mix the hydrochloric acid solution at the bottom of the burette. So pour gently and slowly to fill the burette to the top with distilled water. You will want to make sure that absolutely no air is present in the burette. So you will fill it all the way to the top, even such that it is overflowing. When you put in the stopper, some of the water should go through the hole in the stopper, indicating that there is no air left in the burette. Before inserting the stopper into the burette, thread the copper wire with the magnesium ribbon through the hole in the stopper. Leave a long enough length of copper wire so that the coil of magnesium ribbon is between the 100 mm line and the bottom of the stopper. To begin the reaction, place your finger over the hole in the stopper and invert the burette into a beaker of water. Do this with your ring stand so you can clamp the burette in place. Be very careful not to lose any water from the burette tube as you do this inversion process. Once the burette has been inverted, the more dense hydrochloric acid will begin to mix with the water and travel down towards the magnesium ribbon, where it will undergo a reaction. This reaction produces hydrogen gas that you can see bubbling from the ribbon. As the hydrogen gas is produced, it bubbles towards the top of the burette tube. This pressure forces the water out of the tube, lowering the volume of water in it. You will notice that the volume of water in your beaker increases as the reaction proceeds. You will know that your reaction is complete when you stop seeing any bubbles being formed from the magnesium ribbon. At this time, you need to remove the burette from this beaker and transfer it to a larger one. Place your finger over the hole in the stopper to ensure you do not lose any liquid during the transfer. In order to measure the volume of gas in the burette tube properly, you need to have the level of water in the burette tube and in the beaker at the same height. Make sure that you have sufficient water in the beaker in order to accomplish this. There will be errors in your measurement if the level of water in the burette tube is either above or below the level of water in the beaker. When you are done with this experiment, dispose of any solution that contains acid in the labeled acid waste container.